Hi, I'm Will Flanders from the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty here with Corey DeAngelis of the Cato Institute. Today we're going to talk to you about a new study that we just conducted that looks at the marketplace for school choice in Wisconsin and particularly in Milwaukee. And what we're trying to see here is do we see market forces playing a role that we would expect um, in enrollment decisions and in closure decisions for the city. We conducted an analysis over 10 years, uh, a lot of data for charter schools, public schools, and um, schools in the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program. And we looked at both of these factors in each of these sectors and between sectors. For enrollment, what we found is that uh, schools that have better academic outcomes, so schools that are doing better on standardized tests uh, through the WKC and then later the forward exam, those schools in the charter sector and the MPCP experience much greater growth than did schools that had worse scores on the standardized tests. What we didn't see that we might have expected to see was that safety wasn't really playing a direct role in enrollment growth. So what we saw was that um, academics were the driving force and safety not so much, at least on the front end. So we conducted a subsequent analysis looking for a back end um, effect of safety. We know these two factors are highly correlated and we wanted to see if maybe behind the scenes safety was playing a role. In that analysis we saw in fact that academics and safety are in our data set highly related and there is this backdoor pass so that we think that parents are taking both of these factors into account uh, when they're making decisions about where to enroll their kids. So good evidence that parents are voting with their feet in the MPCP and in charter schools and Corey's going to talk now about what we found with regards to school closures. Yeah, so we actually did a, a Cox regression analysis, COX, um, and it's actually known as a survival analysis type of uh, econometric technique. And they actually, the term was actually coined by medical research uh, that actually looked at predictors of death over time for their patients. So we're not looking at something as gloomy as that, although it is Halloween. Uh, but we're looking at the survival of schools, so to say, over time and what predicts the closure of schools over time. And while Will did a study like this previously in Milwaukee itself, he only looked at the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program schools before. So we are the first study in Milwaukee, and I think in the United States in general, that compares closure rates across sectors, and in particular uses Cox regression, survival analysis techniques, in order to look at predictors of closures across sectors to see is the marketplace working as theorized, are schools that are more uh, subject to market pressures more likely to close, was really the research question that was driving all of this analysis and sur survival analysis in particular. And what we found was the main finding is that enrollment is negatively associated with school closure. So essentially what that means is that schools that have lower enrollment, when people are voting with their feet, uh, based on these quality dimensions um, to, to go to better schools that they see fit for their children, those schools are actually more likely to close across the public sector and the private sector. Um, although enrollment had a stronger relationship to, uh, with closure uh, in the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program schools. So as we would theorize, these schools are more subject to market pressures. It could be that the traditional public schools have additional funding that can keep them afloat for a couple more years longer. And so that could be what's driving the difference in the results, but we do find statistically significant differences in, in both sectors um, based on enrollment and enrollment change. Uh, but what we really found that was exciting is that school quality as measured by standardized test scores, in particular standardized math proficiency rates in schools, is also negatively correlated with school closure after controlling for student background characteristics and the size of the schools. We find that in the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program schools that there is this relationship there, that people are voting with their feet and they're closing down schools based on academic quality for the private schools of choice. However, this relationship is not statistically significant in the public school sector. So while public schools are closing overall in Milwaukee over time, it doesn't seem that academic quality is what's driving those closures. It must be something else that's driving those closures. Um, but the, work, the market is working more as theorized again in the choice sector uh, as opposed to the traditional public school sector. Another thing that was surprising that was also found in the enrollment change analysis of how people were voting with their feet is that in the closure analysis, we didn't find any statistically significant relationship between safety as proxied by the number of 911 calls in the school in the given year after controlling for the amount of students and the types of students that are in the school. But we also do find some refreshing evidence that when we compare across sectors looking at the number of 911 calls after controlling for all these factors, 
that the choice schools, in particular the charter school sector and the MPCP, the voucher school sector, they're both a lot less likely, significantly less likely to experience uh, 911 calls in a given year than traditional public schools. They experience a, a lot less 911 calls, I think over 100 um, after a, uh, in both sectors relative to the traditional public school sector, even after adjusting for the size of the school. Um, so this tends to suggest that the choice sector has safer schools and it could be because parents are choosing safer schools because they care about the safety of their children more than anybody else. So the bottom line I think here is that we see evidence of a functional marketplace in Milwaukee. Uh, whether it can be improved is a question that can be debated continually, but I think we know that there is a marketplace in place and we should be looking for ways to make it better rather than ways to short circuit it or put maybe another overseer in charge when we actually see that people are indeed voting with their feet. I'm Will Flanders along with Corey D'Angelis. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.